Hello, my name is James Heidema. I'm an international trainer and a strategic coach, and I've uh, trained in excess of 174,000 people in the world, in about 55% of the world. And I'm here to share with you the joy and the sorrow of international travel. So, joy and sorrow. Well, let me share the joy with you first. I've just returned from Crete in Greece. I've had the pleasure of spending time with uh, 30 plus managers from Lithuania. This was a reward program for these high performing individuals. And uh, it was my pleasure to spend a few days with them and help them uh, uh, work on their skill development, their motivational factors, uh, help them fill in the gaps in their own methodologies of how they behave in the financial services environment and how they work with team members. Uh, it was a honor to spend time with them. I really had a good time. Uh, it was a really wonderful resort we were at in Crete, a five-star hotel with all of the amenities one would expect. Uh, but most importantly, it allowed me the time over a number of days to interact with them in the classroom and outside of the classroom and uh, I've uh, fortunately found some new friends there. The sorrow is uh, traveling in 2022 is a bit of a challenge because uh, uh, of all the flights I took uh, to get there from the Northwest Territories uh, down into uh, southern Canada on the west coast and then moving to the east coast of Canada and then to Europe and then down into the Mediterranean. Uh, that was five flights spread over four days and every flight delayed. And the, absolutely, the absolute greatest sorrow was my bag never made it. And at this point some 10 days after I should have received my bag, nobody seems to know where it is. Um, and so you end up, you impro improvise. And you know, I had uh, uh, a pair of slacks, uh, two shirts, two pieces of underwear, two, one pair of socks, and one pair of shoes. So because it's in a very warm climate where we were doing the training, I had already advised all of the uh, participants to come in very casual clothing, wear shorts and shirts and whatever, you know, t-shirts, whatever makes them comfortable because it is, although it's an air-conditioned environment we were in, uh, I wanted them to be as relaxed as possible uh, because sometimes um, when people dress up for events, you know, wearing suits and ties, they become more formal and more guarded and tend not to share as much as they could possibly share. And so I wanted them to be very relaxed, and so this allowed me to buy a couple of bathing suits. I mean, short shorts, not any other kind of brief uh, bathing suit, and some casual shirts. And I did the program, and uh, as you see some of the, from the pictures uh, that I'll be sharing with you, um, it worked very well. And people were very relaxed, they were very forthcoming. They challenged the heck out of me because I do facilitated learning. Facilitated learning is where you put the power of the subject in the hands of the participants rather than in the hands of the uh, pr uh, presenter in my case. Um, to do that, you have to be very, very skilled and knowledgeable about the subject matter so that when they do challenge you, which they did, and it was quite wonderful, I love that. It, uh, it uh, breathes life into my heart and soul to have them challenge me. And, and uh, for me to defend and position and motivate uh, whatever we're talking about. And so uh, I really quite enjoyed my time with them. Uh, they were very pleased with my performance and uh, uh, being invited back for next year, which will be in Turkey this time, and uh, be a new group. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, I really quite enjoy training and uh, development. I really enjoy uh, seeing the light go on in the eyes of the participant, of them getting the message and uh, and really feeling empowered uh, to uh, do their jobs. And uh, in subsequent videos, I'll start sharing some things about the, this experience. But uh, 
Yeah, joy and sorrow. It, it was tough. It was demanding. It was frustrating. I felt all the things that many others feel when your uh, bag disappears and you know you haven't the normal toiletries. You don't have the change of clothes. I had brought gifts for everybody, and uh, those are still in the bag. And you know, and so your comfort certainly is uh, uh, limited. You know, your but. Um, I've long since learned that uh, that I shouldn't get frustrated about things that I have no control of, <clears throat> and I had no control of where the bag was, and so it's happened what had happened, you know, and and uh, you know it seemed like every flight that I got on was delayed, and then I missed the connecting flight, and then they put me on a different flight, and that put me in a different direction, and allowed me or caused me to be one extra day and travel to get where I wanted to go and therefore, you know, I didn't get the rest I needed before the class, but I don't think the students noticed that I wasn't rested because I've been doing this for so many years and I presented to so many different groups, uh, you know, from, you know, half a dozen people to, I did a whole raft of training in China of, of uh, some 3,000 people each event and so, uh, I'm quite comfortable in front of large audiences and small audiences um, and uh, I'm very versed in the subject matter uh, because I've been in the business a long time and picked up best practices from around the world that I'm able to really add value in a very short time. And uh, But you know I'm a holistic coach and uh, uh, you know strategically I, I Leave pe move people in a certain direction and tactically I help them find balance in their life uh, between uh, their personal lives and their business lives And because I'm not sure that you can ever separate the two in our business. I think in many jobs you can. You can go home and forget about what you've done for the day but in our case because we're dealing with people's lives and their future and their security and everything else it's, it's very hard to sort of turn it off and uh, you know, I do something very interesting uh, that I've done for years. Every time I uh, do these training exercises in the morning, when I'm getting up, I start thinking about that day of spending time with the audience and asking myself the question, how can I add value today? And then what I do at the end of the day is I sort of say, well, did you add value? Did you, uh, did you see indications that people we're buying what you were selling that feel empowered, they, they feel motivated, that they feel in control of their situation. And then as well, uh, I would do that over each day. Each day I would uh, do that analysis, uh, first position myself and then uh, do the evaluation. And if I found that I wasn't as effective one day, I would work that much harder the next day. Because, uh, you know, for them to gather together you know that I was told by one of the co company shareholders to gather together uh, an audience of 30 people, bring them from Lithuania, put them in this first class environment, bring me over there and and pay me for my time, uh, costs the company around 100,000 euros. So it's a very expensive proposition. So they really need to get value from it. And I have a very good track record and uh, an impeccable one from their p perspective. And a, I tend to uh, over deliver, uh, you know, that I really make sure that people uh, do uh, increase. I remember I was doing a lot of work in Slovakia at one time and there was a very talented uh, uh, manager of training and development for the company and he tracked everything. And he said that uh, every time that I met with any group within the company, within six months their productivity of the entire group was, uh, went up by 30% which is a significant growth for a large audience. And usually the audience who in this case, when I was working in Slovakia, was about 100 people each time and it tended to be for five days. And uh, I find the more time I have to spend with people, uh, the greater my effect will be on them and, and uh, more empowered they'll be because of that. So um, uh, I know that uh, I can make a difference and that's really, you know why I say over my shoulder here, make a difference, is I lead by example. I want to make a difference when I train and develop. So, you know, if, if this is something that your organization would be interested in, I certainly have the skills and I certainly have the uh, credentials and uh, 
um, the testimonials from various clients around the world of the difference I've made within their organizations. And so yeah, my contact information is below. And uh, if uh, you feel you uh, need uh, my level of expertise uh, to improve productivity and to uh, help people develop the skills they need to uh, not only sell, but also to manage financial advisors, then uh, contact me. If you uh, like what you're seeing here and you'd like to hear more, and I've got a number of videos already out there, and there's every Friday I release one. And uh, if you uh, find value, then please subscribe, please like and uh, share it with others. And of course, if you have questions, uh, send me some comments and it'd be my pleasure to deal with those. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen and uh, hope that uh, your international travel, should it take you uh, out of your country is uh, more pleasant than mine was. But I also hope that your result was as good as mine was because the, the joy far surpasses the sorrow. Bye for now.